In the early 1990s, cars used point-to-point -point wiring to connect the electronic control units, or ECUs, used for engine management, transmission control, anti-lock braking and so on. The average luxury car had 30 kilos of wiring harness, over one kilometer of copper wire and more than 2,000 separate connections. This was extremely expensive to manufacture, install and maintain. It was also failure prone and unreliable. During the 1990s, the automotive industry began to use Controller Area Network, a multiplex digital communications bus used to connect ECUs. This approach dramatically reduced the size, weight and complexity of the wiring harness. For example, with CAN bus, as it is commonly known, a door system in a high-end car typically requires four wires, compared to 50 plus with point-to-point -point wiring. The information communicated over CAN is in the form of signals. There are small pieces of information such as dashboard switch positions, wheel speeds, oil and water temperature, battery voltage and engine RPM. In a typical car, there are over 2,500 signals packed together in around 100 messages that are sent repeatedly over the CAN bus. There are real-time constraints or deadlines on the maximum time that signals, and hence the messages that contain them, are allowed to take to be transmitted over the network. A simple example is LED brake lights. When the brake pedal is pressed, this is detected by an ECU in the instrument pack and a signal copied into a CAN message, which is sent over the network. An ECU in the rear of the vehicle receives the message, decodes the signal, and switches on the LED brake lights. There is a short deadline on this. It all happens in less than 1 20th of a second, faster than the time it takes an old-fashioned brake light to illuminate. The use of CAN led to significant cost savings and reliability improvements, leading to its wholesale adoption by the automotive industry. Today, CAN is used in almost every new car sold. Typical family cars have around 25 ECUs connected together by two or more controller area networks. If a CAN message fails to meet its deadline, then the reliability and functionality of the vehicle's electronic systems can be compromised. This leads to intermittent problems and high warranty costs associated with no fault found replacement of expensive electronic control units. The challenge is to guarantee that all of the hundred or so different messages sent over the network will meet their deadlines under all possible conditions. Prior to research in this area by the Real-Time Systems Group at the University of York, the automotive industry used an ad hoc approach to assigning message priorities and relied on extensive testing to try and determine if there would be any missed deadlines during operation. This approach gave no guarantees. It also only allowed a small fraction of the available network bandwidth to be used before the system became unreliable due to intermittent timing failures. In the mid-1990s, researchers in the Real-Time Systems Group here at the University of York developed schedulability analysis for controller area network. This is a mathematical technique that can be used to calculate the longest possible time that each message can take from being queued on one ECU to being broadcast over the network and so received by all of the other ECUs. This analysis enables system designers to determine before they build their system if all of the messages can be guaranteed to always meet their deadlines during operation, and hence to prove if the system will be free from timing failures. Further research at York also showed how to assign message identifiers, which are used to prioritise transmission of messages on CAM to make the best possible use of the available network bandwidth without causing deadlines to be missed. As a consequence of this world-class research, we founded a startup company which along with industrial partner Volvo Car Corporation transferred this technology to industry in the form of the Volcano Communications concept. Since its first use on the Volvo S80 in 1998, Volcano has been used for CAN communications in over 5 million Volvo cars. Volcano technology is also used by Jaguar, Land Rover, Aston Martin, Mazda, the Chinese automotive giant SAIC, and by the world's leading automotive suppliers, 
including both Robert Bosch and Vistian. The main advantages of Volcano come from using the schedulability analysis and priority assignment methods that were developed in the Real-Time Systems Group at York. This analysis enables system architects to configure in-vehicle networks using CAM and systematically check that all of the messages can be guaranteed to meet their deadlines at network loads of up to around 80%. This compares very favourably with a maximum of about 30% achieved using other approaches that are still in use in industry today. The car manufacturers using Volcano have achieved significant improvements in both network efficiency and reliability. They've seen substantial reductions in the time and effort required for testing and development and eliminated warranty costs due to network timing issues. In a competitive marketplace, these benefits to the car manufacturers have been passed on to us as consumers in terms of less expensive cars with more functionality and much better reliability. The future challenges in this area arise from the use of multiple networks often of different types, with signals and messages transferred between them. Here, the inflexibility of some legacy applications gives rise to a number of interesting issues, which are still being researched today. A new CAN standard has also been proposed, allowing flexible high-speed data rights. This brings a whole new set of research problems. The Real-Time Systems Group at York remain at the forefront of research into real-time communications and continue to produce world-class research in this area.